Hello, everybody. It's so nice to see your squares, some of them with live images, some of them with not, but it's nice to know that you're here and you're here to celebrate. My name is Rachel Barek and I'll be your host for this year's Folk Music Ontario Awards. Um, I would like to start by acknowledging that Folk Music Ontario and the office for Folk Music Ontario is located on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabek peoples. I am, I am joining you today from lands that have been stewarded by the Attawadaran, Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. It is governed by the Between the Lakes Treaty Number no. 3 from 1792 between the Mississauga Nation and the Crown, which are now the treaty lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. For even longer, this land has been governed by the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant between the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee peoples that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. And today it is home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. I am so grateful to the Indigenous nations who have continually welcomed settler folks like me into these treaties that bind us all to share and protect the land in the spirit of peace, friendship and respect and make music and be joyful and dance and tell stories. So miigwech, miigwech, miigwech. Um, Folk Music Ontario is an organization that supports the growth and development of the folk music community and industry with a vision of a thriving, inclusive folk music community with local and international impact. The awards we are about to give out today, as we do every year, highlight the important, meaningful and skillful work produced by members of our community. And it is a wonderful way to, to kick off the 2021 FMO annual conference. Starting today, FMO is producing a week's worth of programming, so please go to folkmusicontario.banzoogle.com for more information. You can find things there about the schedule, showcases, and don't forget if you haven't registered already that you can register there. It is a pay what you can uh, event this year, but if you haven't already registered, we do suggest a price of about $50. And as I put in the chat earlier, we really want to encourage everyone to use the chat as a way to communicate throughout the awards, um, connect with one another, congratulate the winners, um, have a good time. Shall we get started? The Folk Music Ontario Songs from the Heart Awards are the first awards we're going to give out. And they include the following categories, children's song, instrumental, political, Roots, which is sponsored by Stakeholder Research Associates, and the Singer-Songwriter category. The journey, jury for the Songs from the Heart Awards were singer, uh, for the Singer-Songwriter Roots um, and Colleen Peterson Award were Trish Balachewski, Melanie Keeley, and Donay Roberts. And for the Children's Instrumental and Political Awards, the jury was comprised of Alison Bowie, Caitlin Milroy, and Kimberly Sundstrom. And we thank them very much for their time and energy. They did a very important job. The first Songs from the Heart Award that we're going to give out tonight is the Children's Award. And the winner for this award for this year are the Relative Minors for their song, A Successful Career as a Dog. Hello, everyone. Hello, thank you. We're some of the relative minors. <laughs> Can you hear us? Yeah. Uh, okay, um, so we're, we're the relative minors from Cambridge, and we just wanted to say what an honor it is to win this award. Uh, it's, no small, it's no small thing to be recognized in the children's music genre here in the heart of Canada. The country has produced some of the best children's acts in the world. Raffi, Fred Penner, Sharon Lawson Graham, to name a few. And some of the country's best loved musicians for grown-ups have also written songs with children in mind, from Paul Anka and Anne Murray to the Bare Naked Ladies and Diana Panton. Clearly, Canadians take young people seriously. We're excited to be a part of this tradition of children's entertainers, and we're thrilled to win this award. It's our first big success in our career as a dog, or I mean, as a children's <laughs> rock band. Uh, Congratulations to all the other winners. Your songs are both meaning meaningful and beautiful. Thank you to the committee, Folk Music Ontario, as well as the Ontario Arts Council. Uh, previous songs from the heart winner, Missy Bowman, who encouraged us to, to submit a song this year. Zach Gerber at Skytrack Studios here in Cambridge. 
and everyone who played on the album or otherwise helped in its production. If you have kids in your life, check out our first album, Play Music, on Spotify or wherever you listen to music. And stay tuned for our next album, The Full Circle, coming out on October 22nd. Thank you. Thanks. Well, this happens sometimes, doesn't it? The technical woes from being in a pandemic and still being on Zoom. Um, Joel, how are things looking at your end? Do you think we can get some sound? Hmm. Well, while Joel's fil fil uh, figuring that out, I just want to say that how great it is that that tradition of great music for children continues in this country. Um, what a, what a, a wonderful group to be a part of when I think of the, the traditions that have come from Rafi um, and uh, Fred Penner and Sharon Lois and Bram, who are um, most definitely um, parts of our community here and have uh, won the Estelle Klein Award in the past, Sharon Lois and Bram. So um, I, I think it's a, a wonderful thing. Can the relative minors come back on while Joel's filling, figuring out the sound? I want to ask you a question. Okay. Excellent. I, I would like to know what kinds of careers dogs have. <laughs> um, well, we have a dog here if you want to ask her. <laughs> what, what, um, what inspired the song? uh well we've always kind of done like little sketch comedy things for fun and it's always been in the back of our mind to have a dog with different jobs <laughs> <laughs> excellent hello excellent an excellent member of the band and an inspiration to all and it wouldn't be a proper zoom without a dog i couldn't agree more carolyn um joel do we think we can try again yes i'm gonna try one more time let's do okay. this okay My dog is looking for a job He's keen and cool and friendly And he's not a spot Applied down at the fire hall But there weren't any spots Tried for seeing I dog But he gets distracted lots So won't you hire him? Most hardworking kid I'm not sure you've ever seen. Check out his resume, it's squeaky clean. You might think that dogs don't make good employees. Just wait and see. shift and he'll put in overtime the factories or cubicles anything you have will be fine there's half a dozen trades in which he has a working knowledge he is starting to believe he shouldn't have dropped out of college higher 
He's the most hard-working dog I ever knew. Not a lazy layabout like Scooby-Doo. If you think that dogs don't make good employees, wait and see. If you ever chance to change your mind, just throw him out on his behind. He rolls over and he hunts. I saw him fix a furnace once, so won't you please hire my dog? Wow, we got there. Fantastic. Congratulations to the Relative Minors on winning the Songs from the Heart Award for their children's song. Next up is the Songs from the Heart Award for an instrumental. And this year's recipient is Graham Lindsay for his song, Fractions. Graham, congratulations. Is Graham here? Well, I think we should listen to his. Oh, there we go. There's Graham. Hey, folks. I'm so sorry I can't join you today, but I'm excited to be down in Prescott, Ontario at the Upper Canada Folk Fest. It's a festival that's uh, live in person and not virtual. So um, we've got Lynn Miles coming up in a few minutes. Um, and so you can probably appreciate that I'm with people from our community, but I still also would love to see your faces. I really miss everybody. So hi. Um, I have to say thank you so much to Folk Music Ontario, to Alka Sharma, to Joel Elliott, and everybody else who's organizing things there. Um, it, Folk Music Ontario has created, over the years uh, since the OCFF days, has created a really solid folk music community in Ontario. And the work uh, Joel, Alka, and uh, the rest of the uh, the board and the staff, the, the work you guys do to 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 foster that and to, to continue the good work of, of the people who came before is absolutely outstanding. You work tirelessly, and I appreciate that. I'm sure we all appreciate the work you do. Songs from the Heart, uh, since I started coming out to OCFF about 15 years ago, um, it was always, a uh, basically, the, the, the recipients, the winners, were a list of people that I, I figured, oh, I should probably know who this person is. Or they were a friend and I respected them. Or they were just, you know, somebody I didn't know and still, huge respect. So being part of the list of the, the, the recipients or the winners for this year is absolutely huge. I... I I, I'm just truly honored to be uh, to be the recipient of the instrumental award. Um, so thank you so much. Um, and I know putting together an awards organization uh, is not uh, not an easy task. So thank you very much for the organizers and the ju the judges for that as well. I want to thank the people who played on the album. So Carol Besvater is the fiddler. She plays. Uh, she's in St. John's, Newfoundland. Jesse Perriard played guitar, and he's in Stratford, PEI. Leonard Pedalek is the banjo player, and uh, he is in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I played mandolin. I also have to say a special thank you to um, the, the late, great Rob Heaney out of Montreal, who, um, who mixed the album. Uh, he mixed both of my albums, and uh, unfortunately, he passed away this year, uh, tragically. And uh, and he was uh, he was he was the best. So thank you very much to Rob for that. Um, and then Harris Newman uh, of Gray Market Mastering mastered the uh, the entire album, but specifically this track. If anyone wants to uh, have a listen to this uh, th this track specifically, as well as other pieces of mine. Um, you can catch my showcase on October 1st, which is this Friday. We're second last. We're right before um, Jessica Pearson in the East Wind. And I hope you'll tune in. I'm really looking forward to seeing all your faces. And I miss you all. Thank you so much. And I hope to play, uh, whether it's play, play with you, jam with you, play your festival, hang out with you, have a coffee. I look forward to all of that when it's safe. Please be well. And thank you again so much. Take care and I'll see you soon, folks.
that was Graham Lindsay's award-winning song for the Songs from the Heart Award instrumental. Next, I want to introduce the Songs from the Heart Award, the Political Song Award. And this year's recipient is GR Grit for their song, Quiet Years. Congratulations. Woohoo! Do we have a message from them, Joel? We don't, and I was expecting Grayson to be here. Are you hiding in one of these? No, thanks. Well, um, okay. we will play okay. Grayson's song. Okay, great.
so they'd have a better life from father down a daughter to my mother and down to mine to struggle with not knowing if the choice you made was right would you have changed your if there was an end inside Waiting out the quiet years Waiting out the quiet years Waiting out the quiet years And that was our Songs from the Heart Political Award winner, GR Grit. Wonderful, wonderful song, Gray. Really proud of you. Uh, we're now going to talk about the Songs from the Heart Award for Roots Music. This award is sponsored by Stakeholder Research Associates. Thank you. And this year's recipient is Jessica Pearson and the East Wind for their song, Ready My Heart. Way to go. Hello. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. I am also here, as Graham was saying, at uh, Upper Canada Folk Festival. Lynn Miles is just starting, so I'm going to keep it nice and short. Um, but it is just when I got the email that we won, um, my mind was completely blown and I don't think I stopped smiling for a very long time. Songwriting means a lot to me. So hearing that this song, which is so special to me, won just really blew me away. Um, I want to thank my co-writer Tara Shannon uh, and mentor Tara Shannon. She's just absolutely amazing um, to help the song be the best it can be. I want to help. I want to thank uh, Debbie Zavitson, uh, who's one of my publishers, um, Neil Whitford, who is my producer, uh, who is just absolutely amazing. Maddie O'Regan, my bandmate, uh, who's not here right now. Um, I want to thank all the musicians who got to play on it and uh, just bring all their talent to it and. I want to thank Folk Music Ontario uh, for first off, throughout all this craziness, still putting on uh, conferences and all these Zoom things so that us artists can still have a way to interact with each other and create music and kind of keep that momentum and keep that positivity going through such crazy times. So thank you all so much. Um, and I want to thank everyone who listened to the song. Um, it's off of our new album we have coming out and it just means a lot. As again, as a songwriter, to have uh, a song nominated, uh, but even just winning an award. It's uh, our first major award win, uh, so it just means a lot. So thank you all so much. Uh, congratulations to all of the winners. Your songs are all amazing, and I'm just so thankful and blessed to be a part of the group with you all. Sidelines playing it safe Don't want to make the first move Or make a mistake Tired of being lonely Holding on to hope There's gotta be more This can't be all that she wrote Deep breath, one step Easing over the
Well done, Jessica Pearson and the East Wind, who just won the Songs from the Heart Roots Award. A reminder that um, the chat function is highly encouraged for you to use for things like finding out that there is a website for the conference, folkmusicontario.banzoogle.com, and you can find out lots of good information, including links to all the websites of all of today's award winners. Um, and thank you, Steve Ram, for also reminding everyone in the chat that these awards will be streamed as of 10 a.m. tomorrow on Folk Music Ontario's YouTube channel. So you can watch on your big screen with your amazing sound system and uh, everything will be wonderful. Everything, you're gonna wanna relive this moment for sure. Next, we've got the Songs from the Heart winner for the singer songwriter category. And this year's recipient is Maddie Leon for his song, All the Time. Congratulations, Maddie. There. Can you hear me now? There we go. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, hey, everybody. Thanks for being here. Uh, big thanks, first of all, to Folk Music Ontario um, for all the support they're showing to, to musicians and artists and just for having this platform. And the conference right now is just uh, after this year we've all been through. It means a lot that you'd go ahead and do this. Um, a big thank you to my brother, Mike, who's our drummer and um, Nelson Sobral, who's our bass player. Um, also, there's some people, you know, that we get to we get to uh, thank in private, but not really publicly in a forum like this. So I just want to thank my parents who've been uh, supporting me for so long, maybe too long. Uh, and uh, my wife upstairs, Jackie, and uh, Mike's fiance, Sherry. Um, yeah, those people that, um, yeah, just, push you along and and keep you going um i'd like to thank inside pocket our label uh dexter brown dan hand uh gavin brown our producer for this song and this this recent album david mahashi for mixing the record um the folk folk community in ontario overall all the artists uh the radio hosts i see a few here today hey jan um the venues, the festivals, people that go to those venues, people that go to those festivals. Um, really proud of this song, and uh, it means a lot to, to get uh, recognized in a year like this. We don't get a lot of feedback these days, so this, this really, really meant a lot. So I hope you like the song. You can move out to the city, leave the home you knew so well You can look for love in places you never go yourself When the walls of your apartment trap the loneliness inside Know that everybody's hurting, there's good things all around us all the time You can run towards some money, you can run towards a life you can run so far away from pain You start to lose sight Of all the people that still love you When you open your eyes No need to feel so empty, no There's good things all around us all the time 
When you feel broken inside There's still good things all around us all the time Time Just open up your eyes There are stars in the sky Traveled centuries to be with you tonight Night There's good things all around us all the time you keep getting worked up about everybody else I wish that you could hear the way you talk about yourself If nothing comes easy, nothing ever will oh. You can have yourself a baby, you can raise her up so well You can help her build the confidence you never had yourself you can worry about the future of a world that's on fire But you're staring at the ashes When there's good things all around us all the time When you feel broken inside There's still good things all around us all the time Time just open up your eyes There are stars in the sky Traveled centuries to be with you tonight Night It's good things all around us all the time You keep getting worked up About everybody else I wish that you could hear The way you talk about yourself If nothing comes easy Nothing ever will Nothing ever will When you feel broken inside There's still good things all around us all the time Time Just open up your eyes There are stars in the sky Traveled centuries to be with you tonight Night it's good things all around us all the time Just beautiful, Maddie. Thank you so much and congratulations. The next award is the Recording Artist of the Year, sponsored by Actor Racks. Thank you to the jury for this award that was made up of Cindy Toir, Andrew Karras, and Abigail Lapel. We have Andrew Karras from Actor Rocks to present the award here today. Hi, everyone. I hope, I hope you can hear me. It's, uh, it's always such a pleasure to come to this event and to hang out with this community that I feel like I can pretend I'm a part of for a brief period. <laughs> uh, it's so amazing to hear all of the uh, incredible, you know, work that comes out of this community at this time of year, even if it's uh, virtual. Um, so I work with the Record Actra's Recording Artist Collecting Society, which is otherwise known as Actra Rax, and it's our job to ensure that artists are paid for the use of their work, in particular. We ensure that performers from vocalists to musicians receive their share of royalties for the use of recordings on which they've performed. One of our goals, I would say, is to help recording artists focus on their craft instead of maybe you know, looking for a part-time job. And for a lot of us, this is really what drives us to push hard at you know, the work we do, which is you know, a lot of spreadsheets and data. <laughs> so it's the possibility that great artists might have a bit more time to make one more recording and put it out into the ether and make us all better off. And I think in a lot of ways, this year's recipient of the Recording Artist of the Year Award is the artist that we imagine when we look for that drive at Actor Rex. She's the kind of artist that, you know, when you hear in a coffee shop, you stop dead in your tracks for a few moments before you run over to the barista to like find out what the music was. You know, if you hear it on the radio, you immediately turn it up and start getting into a group. Uh, it's the kind of artist that when you listen to, and if you're me, you get why you stopped performing many years ago because you're utterly overwhelmed with the skill. Um, and I think Dion Taylor is the type of artist that awards were created for. And for this reason, Actor Rax is very honored to celebrate and present Dion Taylor with the 2021 FMO Recording Artist of the Year Award. I think that she was not able to make it, but graciously supplied a video um, to accept she, the award. She did not, but I'm going to let her music speak for her. Much better. <laughs> How do you know that 
this is the end when you can't even look me in the eye after all we've been through together oh how can we just say goodbye darling I'm only human flesh and blood not 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 made of stone it was just a moment in time and the devil made me do it don't crucify me leave me alone oh give me one more shot for the road my dear one last chance and love we got nothing to lose and i'm feeling lucky shot and I'm gone Remember that old saying that it's always, always, always darkest before the dawn There's a light in your eyes and the spirit's telling me Lady Luck is about to move on. Give me one more shot for the road, my dear. One last chance and love. We've got nothing to lose, and I'm feeling lucky. That's what I'm talking about. Congratulations to Dion Taylor on winning the Actor Rack Sponsored Recording Artist of the Year Award this year. You know, when I was on the board of Folk Music Ontario, I remember when we were starting the conversations, actually, Janie Lawson was start starting the conversations with Actor Racks about this partnership. And um, I, the year that I was president, this came to fruition. And I can't tell you how exciting it is to see artists like Dion Taylor be recognized. And many, many thanks to Actor Racks for your sponsorship of this really important award. The next award is the Colleen Peterson Award. And this is another important partnership for Folk Music Ontario. This is a partnership with the Ontario Arts Council. And we have Carolyn Glud, Awards Officer at the OAC to present this award. Carolyn? Carolyn, you're muted. It wouldn't be a Zoom call without a, an accidental mute. So thank you. <laughs> okay. Unmute myself. Done. Okay. Thanks. I was saying thank you, uh, Rachel. Also, 
you know, when I fall asleep at night and I get into my deep, deep sleep and I start to sing in my dreams, it's not my voice that I hear. It's Dion Taylor's voice that I hear. How does that happen? Thank you, Dion, for making my dreams sound better uh, every night. Um, but I'm here today to talk to you about um, the Colleen Peterson Songwriting Award. So yes, my name is Carolyn. I'm from the, I'm the awards officer at the Ontario Arts Council. I'm joining you from beautiful downtown Collingwood, Ontario. Since 2003, we've been very proud to partner with Folk Music Ontario on the Colleen Peterson Songwriting Award. This prize honors the memory of Colleen Peterson, a beloved singer songwriter who made substantial contributions to Canadian folk and country music. It was established by Colleen's sister, Shirley Richardson, and her friend, fellow musician and FMO member, Laura Bird. Each year, the award is presented to an Ontario-based emerging singer-songwriter in the genres of roots, traditional folk, or country music. Nominations are drawn from Folk Music Ontario's Song from the Heart competition. Thank you to this year's assessors. Your work is much appreciated. And today it is my privilege to introduce to you the winner of the 2021 Colleen Peterson Songwriting Award, Julie Title. For those of you who don't know Julie yet, she's a Toronto-based singer-songwriter and draws inspiration from the folk music of the 1970s and 1990s. Her music has been featured on television shows like The Fosters and Burden of Truth, and her songs are in regular rotation on folk and roots radio. Julie is gearing up for the release of her first full-length album. It will include the song that is this year's Peterson Award jury winner. That song is Ghost, and I'm excited for us all to listen to it in, uh, together uh, in a few moments, but first we'll hear from Julie herself. So, felicitations, congratulations, Julie, over to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, it's nice to see your face. When you called me, I was just kind of like, ah, so <laughs> nice to see you in real life. Hi, everyone. Um, it's really funny because you'll see in my showcase, I recorded in the same room as Dion. So I just rearranged it slightly. <laughs> um, I want to say thank you so much to Folk Music Ontario and the Ontario Arts Council for this award. Um, I'd also like to pay my respects and gratitude to Colleen Peterson and all of the other incredible folk songwriters here who have carved a path for me. Mike Dixon, thank you for believing in me. He's my manager. Um, Omar Lodge and Andrea Aguilar, I want to thank so much for your guidance. And of course, I want to thank my amazing family and friends for your unwavering support and encouragement. Um, it hasn't been an easy year for us musicians, as we all know. So I'm just so grateful for the support. So grateful to be here with all of you. Um, I want to wish everyone watching health, happiness, and a lovely evening. Thank you so much again.
Well, congratulations to you, Julie. And thanks, Carolyn, for coming and awarding the Colleen Peterson Award to Julie on behalf of the Ontario Arts Council. I am beyond thrilled to introduce the next award, which is named after the amazing woman, Estelle Klein, a woman who probably is best known for being the artistic director of the Mariposa Folk Festival for a long, long time and really shaping the way that folk festivals now look in our country to this day. She also was quite instrumental in um, working with um, folk artists across many decades, um, helping them with their careers. Um, and I, I think that the fact that we've named this award after Estelle speaks volumes about all the people who have won it in the past and certainly the person who has won it this year. And I'm going to try not to get choked up because this person is a dear, dear friend of mine. Um, it is given out to someone who's made an impact on the folk community in Ontario and is voted on by Folk Ontario, Music Ontario members. And this year, the recipient of the award goes to the wonderful, the marvelous, the incomparable Eve Goldberg. And I would now like to introduce the video. Yes, let's clap for Eve, first of all. Why am I just rushing to this video? I know it's going to be good. That's probably why. Eve, you're incredible. Congratulations. Um, I would now like to introduce um, the video that was produced by Wavelength Media, particularly Graham Lindsay who we saw earlier, who traveled to Toronto to interview Eve and a few others to put this video together. Please enjoy. Hi, <laughs> we're here to talk about Eve Goldberg. <laughs> let me rise in the morning, feel the joy. In living, let me open my heart like a flower unfolds. Red my birth. Did an artist in the schools program in that in that high school with with those kids, including Eve, and so that was the first time we really worked together. And you know, so for this whole span of her life that I've known her, which is the biggest part of it, she has always had this wonderful quality where it's like if something needs to be done, she would say, "Well, let's let's do that. Let's try and, and get it done." In 1996. Uh, I got together with a, three other reprobates, Grit Laskin, Ken Whiteley, and Paul Mills, and we began a record company called Borealis. And Eve uh, became our first manager at the, uh, at, the, at the company, which essentially meant she did everything, you know. <laughs> well, we sat back and hummed and hawed about who we would sign next. I always somehow got involved in organizing things or, you know, uh, helping out in different ways besides just wanting to be a performer. I just wanted to be around the music and help make the music happen and help foster good spaces for people to make music and that kind of thing. Our first choice, you know, when we were starting Borealis, you know, who, who would be better to, to run our office than, than Eve was, it was kind of the universal feeling and we were so happy when she agreed to do it. And so it was a really great place for me to be to learn and grow and um, make connections with people. And um, and I was able to keep playing music sort of on the side. At a certain point, I realized I don't think I can keep a full-time job and try to do music. So that's the point when I decided, okay, I think I'm ready to move on now, you know. It's not just that she does things, but she says, how could we do this better? You know, so whether that is organizing an event like The Woods, or organizing her ukulele classes, or being a performer, being a performing artist. And very soon we saw this talent of Eve Goldberg, and she became one of the operating group of the Woods Music Camp, which was Canada's oldest adult folk music camp. And she helped us for decades. She was part of the team, it was great. There's, there's been so many examples of, of, of times where Eve has just been willing to pitch in, and and time and time again and do a, a great job when she is doing it you know this needs to be done then let's do it well the, th the thing that i would say about eve is that she's uh, one of the people who realizes that folk music is yes it's about the music but it's about community 
And those things are equally important, or some people think the community is even more important. And Eve was one of those people who was very, very much involved in the community aspects of, of the music that we all love. And it's also a way that we connect to each other and uh, it can be transformative personally, but also socially transformative. It can really change um, the world. I've known her for over 15 years and I feel like I'm still learning something. You know, we'll be having a conversation. Oh, I helped found Arts Can Circle. What? Like I, you know, I just am learning all these things um, over time. And uh, yeah, she just, she just spends her time. She doesn't talk about it. She just spends her time, uh, her time and energy on what she thinks is important, which is fostering musical community. I did know Estelle um, and I was lucky enough to get to know her um, a few years before she died, so maybe like three or four years before she passed away. One day she called me up and she said, do you know this guy Mike Stevens? And um, I said, well yeah, we're putting out one of his albums and um, you know, I'd just been starting to get to know him and um, she was like, I want to talk to him. You know, he, I heard him interviewed on the radio, I think what he's doing is amazing, I want to help. And you know what, you were there right from the very beginning with Arts Can Circle. I think you were at the first meeting with Estelle, actually, and I can only imagine uh, the smile on Estelle's face knowing that you're, you're getting this award. She was one of the uh, founders of the uh, Common Thread Community Chorus. We decided to start a folk music choir or chorus, and I was like, really attracted to that idea and my partner Ellen and I, um, both of us, we were like, that is so cool. And it's kind of like Song Circle, no audition, so you know, you, who, everybody's welcome. And then you create an environment where people can learn and get better and, and, and you sing music that's like social justice oriented, community oriented. In 1999, that's when uh, Common Thread uh, Community College of Toronto started. We were just kind of making stuff up as we went along, and we were really fortunate to um, find Isabel Bernaus, the conductor, who's still the conductor of Common Thread. We decided to start the choir, a social justice choir. Uh, so that was really right at the, the, the heart of what, what IF does as well, with, with, her, with her music and her care for the community. It was a community choir. It was bringing worlds together to, to give shape to that, um, to a, to a folk choir. And I think that that's a big part of her contribution and, and, and Sue Goldberg's, uh, of course, and the fun. Not only is she a fabulous musician, but I'm sure other people have told you this, she is an extraordinary teacher. And uh, yeah, her, her gift is, is really to be, she's super generous and organized and, and shares in a really complete way. And, and she's just one of the most wonderful teachers. And to be able to teach alongside of her, as I've been able to do a few times over the last few years, is becomes this a education for me as well. You know, like this is how you teach. People loved it when she taught beginning guitar because she was such a good, caring teacher. Everybody left that workshop series with some knowledge, with some ability that they doubted they'd ever have in the space of only four or five days at a music camp. But they left with skills. It, she's a natural teacher. I found out I could join my local, local in Toronto, um, but I also started running into Local 1000, which was this um, non-geographic local of traveling musicians that was kind of a different thing within the musicians' union. I was a member for 20 years without really being seriously involved, you know, um, and then I uh, was asked if I would serve on the board and be the Canadian Vice President. And of course she's not only went on to be the Canadian Vice President, but she went on to in fact become the, pre the President of Local 1000 and you know the first Canadian President of that local. And so it's it's been just great that uh, she's not only run with it, but she's taken it to new heights. The whole idea of making harmony is so fundamental to who Eve is because it's about creating harmony whether we are singing together or whether we are working together, whether we're a community together. It's about creating that, that sense of harmony. It's about creating this 
whole that's bigger than the sum of its parts. And, and Eve is someone who really gets that. And uh, it's just, it's beautiful in all of the ways that it manifests. Eve has such an amazing background in traditional music and music that really s speaks to her. She can sing it from the heart. She can sing it unaccompanied beautifully as well. Eve, you know, comes from a family where there's, there's intergenerational social activism and intergenerational singing of folk music. She's really steeped, <laughs> steeped in it. I think over the years, at different points, I've been involved in different ways, and sometimes I pulled back and could just kind of um, been more focused on music rather than the activism, but the, you know, your beliefs always come into your music anyway. You can't keep them out, really. Honestly, there are very few people who I can listen to nonstop forever, and Eve is one of them. Such a beautiful voice, always choosing exactly the right song for her voice and for what she believes in, but also she just has a real gift. Boy, is, you can hear it in her own voice sometimes in her singing. She's got all these wonderful different colors, and, and I think it comes from, you know, she spent some quality time listening to great old blues singers. How does it feel to sing harmony with Eve? She's a beautiful singer, and um, just to, when our voices are together, it, it feels amazing. It's a, a, yeah, I never want to stop singing with Eve. <laughs> yeah. The total. The, the total person that she is, is about the music and the community and doing things for others. I know that her mom would be incredibly proud of her and was always proud of her. But um, her mom, of course, was a real fan of Eve. Eve, congratulations on this award. You know, you've always stood for fairness and equality and inclusion and building community as well as being an absolutely killer musician and, uh, and a great friend. You know, in addition to all her amazing qualities as a musician, I'm going to get a little verklempt. <laughs> She's a damn fine human. <laughs> and that's something that, uh, you know, I think that just comes out again and again. She's a great friend. She's, she listens, she talks. Um, and, and she's there. She's there for her friends. And that's mwah, Eve. <laughs>
um, who was a lifelong folky community builder and social justice advocate. If it weren't for her, I wouldn't have become a musician and I would never have gotten involved in the folk music community. And I think if she were alive, she would probably have been nominated for this award herself. So I guess I can say it's all her fault. Um, through my family, I absorbed a commitment to social justice, and I also absorbed a lot of music. My older brother and sister, Ruth and David, who are both musicians in their own right, turned me on to tons of music and taught me a lot. So I owe them a huge debt of gratitude. Thank you, Ruth and David. I want to thank my partner, Ellen, who has encouraged me, collaborated with me, and helped me every step of the way even when my crazy musical lifestyle made her life more complicated. It's amazing to me that we are, she is still here after being together 25 years. The great Utah Phillips once said, time is an enormous long river and I'm standing in it just as you're standing in it. My elders are the tributaries and everything they thought and every struggle they went through and everything they gave their lives to, and every song they created, and every poem that they laid down, flows down to me. And if I take the time to ask, and if I take the time to see, and if I take the time to reach out, I can build a bridge between my world and theirs. I can reach down in that river and take out what I need to get through this world. This quote, which I just found a few days ago, expresses so much of what I feel about the folk community. From the time I started getting involved in folk music in Toronto, I met people who welcomed me into the community and freely shared their knowledge. Whether it was teaching me a better way to make an F chord, encouraging me to sing at a song circle, playing with me on stage, or giving me career advice, I've been so blessed and I've gained so much from their generous spirits. I couldn't possibly name everyone uh, that falls into that category, but I want to mention some names. Some are people who are no longer with us, and uh, it's important to me to name them today as a way of bringing their spirits into the room with us. And for those of you who are still with us, I want to thank you personally. Um, so thank you to Estelle Klein, Grit Laskin, Judith Laskin, Lainey Malamud, Ken Whiteley, Ellen Manny, Jane Sapp, Bill Garrett, Paul Mills, Penny Lang, Tam Kearney, David Perry, Kathy Fink and Marcy Markser, Jackie Washington, Peggy Seeger, Rick Fielding, Moe Scarlett, Guy and Candy Carawan, and the many musicians who were part of the staff of the Woods Music and Dance Camp over the years. These are some of the people who connected me to that river that Utah describes. They help me understand where I'm standing in the river and what I'm supposed to do with that now. From these human beings, I learned how to be a better musician, how to contribute to community, how to make the world around me a little better, and why it's so important. I learned songs, I learned about traditions, I learned about social justice and I started to understand the importance of folk music, folk songs and folk ways, people's music, people's culture. I learned that music and other creative expression is powerful, that it can transform individuals in profound ways and that it can also change the world. I learned that even though we live in a highly inequitable society that puts value on money, personal gain and corporate profit, that there are always people down here at the grassroots doing things that resist and subvert those ideas. And a lot of the time they're doing that through creative expression. The struggle against apartheid in South Africa, the civil rights movement of the 1960s, and the Idle No More movement are just a few examples of how humans have used the tools of music and art to envision a more just world communicate important information, validate their experiences, and sustain each other through trying times. I began to recognize that in our society, we are taught early and often that only some people have talent. You are either born with it or you're not. 
And if you're not, you should stay away from making art or singing or dancing or whatever. We're very effective at shutting down that natural human instinct and desire for art and expression. I started to understand what a terrible injustice that is and how it causes deep injury to our basic humanity. I'm, uh, whoops, wrong page. No, oh my goodness, this all got depaged. Uh, pardon me while I get my pages back. Right in the middle of the most dramatic part. I learned how when we live in a society that rewards corporate greed and individual achievement over the health and well being of the collective, creating community can be a radical act. Those are words from my friend Lainey Malamud, who I um, mentioned earlier. Lainey was a dance caller and a community educator who had the idea of starting a sleepover folk music camp for adults. Lainey imbued the Woods Music and Dance Camp with a spirit of joy and play, the idea that we can all make music, we can all dance, we can all be creative, whatever our previous level of experience. I first went to the Woods when I was about 17, and it was transformative. That basic philosophy around creating community has carried me into almost everything else I've done, into helping organize the Woods for many years, into my performing, into teaching guitar and ukulele classes, into helping start a community choir, and many other things I've gotten myself mixed up in over the years. I'm saying all this because I think what we do is important. It matters. I think about how this pandemic has separated us all physically and prevented us from making music together, and how one of the first things that happened in Italy when people were uh, locked down was to go out on their balconies and play music together. We need the connections that music and art bring us. If we are going to survive as a species, it's going to be art and the connections that it creates that are going to see us through. I'm so grateful to be part of this folk community. It's my home, my bedrock. It's where I feel most alive and human. And it's where I feel most comfortable. But I also want us to, I also want to challenge us not to sit back and get too comfortable. We always need to be enlarging our vision, building bridges and opening space for more voices that have been left out. Whose voices need to be centered? Who's not here? Who should be here? We have the opportunity to keep pushing boundaries and doing that is not always going to be comfortable. It's going to change our community, and I think that's a good thing. Recently, I was in a meeting of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Working Group of my union, Local 1000. The amazing anti-racist educator Saul Sarabia joined us to talk about anti-racism work within Local 1000. And he described anti-racism work, anti work as the process of continuing to walk towards each other while asking the hard questions. I hope we can continue walking toward each other, asking the hard questions with respect for each other and with our deep love for what this community is and what it could be. The river we are standing in is long and deep, but it is always trickling off in new and interesting directions. So I hope we can take care of our ecosystem I hope we can always hold on to that sense of community and remember to dip back into it for that water when we need it. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing all of you at the rest of the conference. I'm going to play your song, Eve, but are you going to show everybody your award statue as well? My award statue, I forgot, it's sitting right here. Oh my goodness. Alka oh. and Joel were so great at actually getting the award to me <laughs> um, ahead of time so I could hold it in my hands. Thank you for reminding me. I almost forgot. So thank you so much. It's, it really means a lot. It's a beautiful piece of art in itself, and um, I feel just really grateful to have it. So thank you.
We've been down in the valley where the sun don't shine. Been walking in the shadows for a long, long time. We sowed seeds of destruction at the end of a gun. Now we need to reckon with the damage done. Green grass still grows. Shed tears of sorrow on bitter ground. But the guiding spirits of the ones who've gone stand beside us and call us on. and the stillness, the dark and the light. It's gonna take courage and a fierce kind of love, the grace of compassion and the strength of the dove. We are the ones by the one and only Eve Goldberg, our winner of this year's Estelle Klein Award. Estelle would be proud that you've won this award, Eve. I know she would have been. Eve Goldberg, community builder, teacher, organizer, activist, leader, singer, songwriter, and definitely a tributary in our folk music community. Congratulations, Eve. One more round of applause, please even if it's all virtual. <laughs> I would like to remind everyone that David Newland will be interviewing Eve Goldberg um, on Tuesday, September 29th from 11.30 to 12.30. That's 11.30 a.m., not p.m. I know we're not in person this year, so maybe not quite so many late nights uh, this year <laughs> at the conference. Uh, so that's 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. on Tuesday, September 29th. Eve Goldberg interviewed by David Newland. Thank you to the Folk Music Ontario's Awards Committee, Casty Houston, Max Merrifield, and Amy Terrian, as well as to Emma Jane Julian, who was instrumental in putting everything together for the Awards Committee these past few years when she was on the Folk Music Ontario board. Thanks to uh, also to Joel Elliott, Wolf Eye Productions, and all of the sponsors of the awards, including the Ontario Arts Council, Actra Rex, and Stakeholder Research Associates. As well, thanks to the Department of Canadian Heritage and the Ontario Arts Council for their operational funding for Folk Music Ontario. And a final big congratulations to all of this year's award winners. I wish every one of you well as you journey through this year's Folk Music Ontario conference throughout this week. So to the winners and to all of you who are watching, may you learn, may you connect, 
and may you find community. Take care of each other. Bye.